So the topic that we'll be covering in this tutorial is shares and dividends. It's the fourth and the last chapter in, under the heading of commercial math. Um, there's not much to this chapter compared to the other three in commercial math. It's very easy. Uh, you, but to do it, you have to get some uh, get some terms straight first. Um, the first one is face value. Now, every share of any company has a face value, which is basically a price, and it's fixed. It never changes. Um, whether the company is doing well or badly, it'll never change. Um, the second term is market value. Uh, market value is the one which fluctuates. It increases, decreases. It can be. It can go below the face value. It can go above the face value, and over time it's bound to go up and down. It's the more dynamic one. Now, um, that's face value and market value. Also, uh, a shareholder, which is a person who invests in a company share, uh, in return for his investment in the company, the company pays him a sort of interest, which is called dividend, per share. Uh, dividend is always, always given on the face value never on the market value, it's always on the face value which is the one that is fixed. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether the market value is above or below at the time of paying dividend. Uh, dividend will always be paid on the face value. And uh, again, uh, when you are comparing the market value and face value, there are three terms again which you should know. If the market value is the same as the face value, say both are rupees 100, then the share is called at par. At par. If the market value is below the face value, say uh, face value is 100, market value is 80, then the share is called at discount. Easy to remember because you can buy it for a lesser value, or it's also called below par naturally. And uh, when the opposite happens, when market value is more than face value, it's called at premium or above par. Now just coming to the formula, there is the terms that we discussed. F wave is face value. This one is the one that is fixed. And the second one is market value. Uh, it fluctuates. So, there are a few basic formulae. Uh, firstly, dividend. Dividend, as I said, is the interest given uh, per share. So, dividend. Just like in simple interest, you have a certain percent, rate percent per annum or whatever. Um, same way over here, you have a dividend percent. Just going to call it D percent over here. So now dividend mathematically is equal to number of shares, I'm, call, I'm going to call it N here, into, uh, we said that dividend is always given on face value, always. So N into FV and multiply this by the D percent. D percent here, uh, say it's 10 percent, you're going to multiply it by 10 by 100, not just 10, so you need to remember that. Uh, this formula is the basic formula in the chapter, um, and uh, there's, this is not really tested, it's very basic. Uh, the more important part is uh, rate of income on investment is also called yield percent it's also called rate of return so I'm just going to write R of R rate of return this is dividend I'm writing D upon investment into 100 so dividend upon 
any number of shares upon the investment in those shares into 100. Of course, uh, this investment will take into account the market value when the shares were bought. Dividend takes into account face value. So this formula just tells you, um, you often have questions when you'll be given two cases. Uh, you'll be given two rates, you'll be given two uh, market values and you'll be asked to find which one is a better option. Uh, so over here this formula comes in use so you can easily figure out which one will give more uh, per rupee you spend. So these are two basic formulae and then of course to find number of shares just, it's pretty easy n is equal to the total investment that you made total investment upon uh, the market value when you bought it when you bought it um, so say that you spent 10,000 rupees and the market value at the time was uh, just 100 rupees so total investment 10,000 upon 100 so you get 100 shares uh, say the market value was 50 rupees that means it'll double so 200 shares so um, you ought to know this formula and uh, this one's common sense really. Um, that's all there really is in this chapter to know. Uh, the rest all, it's really the same questions which are just framed in different ways. Each of them you find different things. So I'm just going to do a few for you just to get the hang of it. I'm just going to erase this. And uh, I, I told you uh, about uh, when a share is called at premium, when it's called at discount. Uh, often they'll test your knowledge of this by framing a sort of word problem, but that shouldn't really be an issue. So, firstly, uh, a simple problem. A person buys shares of a company at rupees 90 and sells them when the price becomes rupees 30 below par. Find his loss if he invested 4050. Okay, so what we've been given is a person buys shares at rupees 90. This is the original market value. Then after some time, the market value becomes 30 below par. So it's face value minus 30. And this is when he sells all those shares. Supposing he buys n shares at rupees 90. Over here, he sells all those n shares at this rate. Now you have to find his loss. And uh, this by itself is not enough. The other information given is he invested 4,000. 4050 i equal to 4050 now it's given to you that he bought n shares of rupees 19 it's given that uh, his total investment was 4050 so from the earlier formula uh, you know that n is equal to the total i which is 4050 here and just divide this by the market value at the time it was bought. So just cut these zeros here. And uh, this will go 9 will divide 405. It will go 45 times. Um, okay. So from this, you know that he bought 45 times. Now you have to. Uh, now that you know that n is 45, uh, you also know that over here we actually assume that uh, the face value is 100. So over here, face value minus 30, we take as 100 minus 30. 
100 minus 30, 70. Now he sold 45 shares at rupees 70. So when he sold it, money he earned was 45 into 70. And this will come out to be um, 3150. And from this you can easily calculate his loss. You know that he invested 4050 in the beginning and now he has he, he got only 3150. So it's obvious that he lost 900. I'm just going to do another sum which involves uh, it's one of those questions which asks you which is the better investment. Uh, it's a good question. So Okay, uh, what's given in this is two options. Uh, the first one, I'm just going to change the color. Okay, so I'm just going to write case one. And over here, case two. Information given is which is a better investment, 12% at rupees 120 or 8% at rupees 90. So 12% at 120 or 8% at 90. So, for this, uh, you do assume the face value to be 100 over here. So, we're going to calculate the dividend. Uh, dividend equal to the percent into N into face value. So, over here in this case, it's 12 by 100 into N. Let's take N as 1, just 1 share. And in face value, which you're assuming 100 since it's not given, cut, cut, rupees 12, you get. Similarly, over here, same method d is equal to percent, which is 8 by 100, into n, which is 1, into face value, which is 100. So by this, you get rupees 8. Okay, so. Uh, now you can, uh, now you know the investment for each share and you know the dividend. So now you can calculate the rate of return. Uh, that's in this case would be dividend which is 12 upon investment which is 120 into 100. So as you can see it comes out to be 10%. And in this case, again you do D upon the market value, so it's 8 by 90 into 100. So, this, so 80 by 9, which is, I think, uh, yeah, it will be, uh, it will be less than 9 basically. So, you can see that. This one is the better investment for sure. This will be uh, eight point eight eight. And so you get that the rate of return is much greater in this one. So case one is the better investment. Uh that, let's just do one more question. And uh, this one is a three-part question. And these are the ones which are likely to be tested. So this was actually tested in 2003. Uh, so it's. I'm just gonna write down. It's long. So what you have to first find is 
uh, find number of shares. Okay, so the investment is twenty. And uh, also, you've been given that nominal value. Uh, nominal value. Uh, I'm not sure if I mention it, but it's another term, face value, which is a fixed value. So nominal value uh, is rupees twenty six. Face value is rupees twenty six, and it's been given its ten percent premium. That means uh, the market value is twenty six into. Hundred and ten percent, because you're adding ten percent to the original. So what you get is twenty-eight point six. Okay, from this, you know how much one share cost, and you also know how much you spent in total. So when you divide these, I'm just gonna get the calculator. So you get exactly seven hundred, seven hundred over here. So you get your first part. Um, now your second part. This was first. Second part part asks you the dividend he receives annually. Now you found out n seven hundred. So the formula by now seven hundred into uh, the face value, which is 26, and into the D percent, which is 15 upon 100. Just cut this 100 with the 700 and times the calculator again 7 into 26 into 15. 2730. So his dividend per annum is 7. Three zero, and now the third, third part asks you the rate of interest he gets on his money. Now, um, it's phrased in in just another way. It's asking you what is the rate of return really. He he's got two seven three zero as dividend, and. In total, he paid twenty thousand twenty. I just multiply this by hundred. It's asking for a rate of interest, and that is always in a percent. In other words, this is just rate of return. And uh, when you solve this, you you get calculator again. You get thirteen point sixty degrees. Hopefully, the calculations will be more straightforward uh, in the sums that you get. Uh, everything will get cut out most probably, but uh, this is a basic methodology. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is know the formula and know the terms and you'll be fine with this chapter and next time we'll be dealing with algebra